Hello, welcome to the Cyborg here at the StarCityGames.com Modern Open in Indianapolis. Part of the SCG Tour brought to you by Ultimate Guard. I'm Nick Miller alongside Jerry Thompson. Hi. A man we all know, we've seen many times, crushed the Grand Prix last weekend. You and your friends put this Death Shadows deck on the radar of everyone. Yeah. Uh, I like. I, th I thought you were going to say, like, oh, you guys, like, innovated, whatever, but no. We I, definitely I, I, did avoided, that. I avoided yeah. that. We, we straight ripped it from the internet. <laughs> it was really good, and, and now everyone wants to play it, I think. Yes. So. It was, you know, lingering online, you know, 5 0 some leagues here and there. Mm -hmm. You guys took it, ran with it, and it looked dominant last weekend. Now we, it is the deck to beat this week. Absolutely. So we put three players in the top four. It won the tournament, uh, and then two of the people got 13th and 39th. That was the worst finish. So Something like 78% win rate or yeah, something? Yeah, not counting buys. Yeah. So very absurd. Okay. Now, you said this deck was, you know, very good, probably the best deck in modern, so much so that you bought the ticket to fly out to play it again here in Indianapolis. Bought a, a $520 plane flight. I'm three and one, so come on. <laughs> Want to get that money back. All right. So let's talk about the deck because, you know, this deck... I don't want to say existed in the previous modern format. The Death Shadow deck was very different than what you're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. So the previous one was just an aggro deck. It had Swift Spear, Step Links, uh, Become Immense, a lot of Battle Rages. Whereas this deck, it has Death Shadow. It's doing a lot of the same stuff with like Street Wraith and everything, but it's more of just like a grindy mid range deck. Yeah, you just kind of are recurring and playing as many one and two mana giant creatures as you can and then just beating down with them. Yeah, so the, the first two turns definitely are spent kind of disrupting your opponent. You have eight discard spells in the main deck, which is awesome because, like, normal Jund can't really afford to play eight because their games go longer and they have, like, these bad top decks eventually. But this deck, like, you have such a low land count that... You can be down, like you can have like two semi-dead cards in your hand and still be completely fine. So getting right. to play eight discard is awesome. I want one on turn one every game. And then it's like, yeah, between discard and like some removal, and then maybe turn three, you have delirium, so you traverse for a big fatty and you just start the clock then. Right. So instead of Gitaxian Probe, like the former versions have, you just have eight discard spells so you know what you're playing around, mm -hmm. pick apart their hand, and then you say, now you have to deal with this never-ending stream of giant creatures. Right, and then the hope is that from turn three on, like you're adding to the board every single turn or at least dealing with what they present. And if they're a combo deck or if they have like a bunch of little blockers and maybe they're able to win the race, this comes up against things like Merfolk and a little bit against the Malira Company decks. Mm -hmm. uh, like you have things like Teamer Battle Rage and Garkland Rampager to close the game, but you don't want too many of them because you're not really a combo deck. Right, this is no longer the days of a bunch of Become Immense Teamer Battle Rage. You don't even have Become Immense in this deck. You only nope. have one Teamer Battle Rage mm -hmm. and then the Gore Clan Rampager, which you can traverse for when you kind of want it. Yeah, and I was a little skeptical of that going into the Grand Prix, but it was really good for me the entire time. Okay, so when you're testing and you guys are you know, deciding when you're going to play this deck, when was the breaking point when you're like, okay, this deck is just absurdly good? Uh, so I had not played any games before the tournament. Mm. So I was on like Grixis Control, and then I was like, no, I need a clock because of what the modern metagame looks like. So I was like, Grixis Delver, and then I was looking through lists. I saw this online. I was like, this is probably just a better version of what I wanted to do. Just like clock plus disruption is just almost always a reasonable strategy in modern, right? right? So uh, like Wednesday, like Tuesday, Sam was posting about the deck in our team forum, Sam Black. And then Wednesday, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll play this. So I started building it. And then on like Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Sam was like, okay, guys, guys, <laughs> this deck is really good. I'm like 14 and three or something. And like the losses were punts, you know? So it's like, okay, you know, I was already there. So that's good. And then we were talking about the deck a little bit. And then one by one, like more people just hopped onto the deck. All right, and now it is where we are. Yeah. Now let's talk about some of the other cards in the deck. Cause you know, Tarmogoyf, Death Shadow, these are the cards you're winning the game with. Mm -hmm. Traverse is the card that kind of helps you find those. Then you have some other pieces running around here. Culligan's Command, Abrupt Decay, Tarfire, and Fatal Push. Let's go ahead and talk about Fatal Push and Tarfire as these are kind of the you know new card and the old card that has a bunch of utility in this deck. Yeah, so you have 18 land, like I said, so you have a really low mana count. Like, it's not unlikely that you keep a one lander, maybe miss your second or miss your third land drop, so you need cheap spells to interact. So uh, I'm up to four Fatal Push this weekend. I only had three last weekend, and I have three Tarfires, and... Yeah, you just need to interact with the early creatures, you know, like Goblin Guides, Birds of Paradise, Arcbound Ravager stuff, right? And Tarfire is two card types, so it helps with Delirium because having sorcery and land is kind of a given. You have 12 fetch lands and a bunch of sorceries. So 
having tar fire, even if you, you know, want to target yourself to turn on your death shadow, like it turns on delirium really quickly, even mm -hmm. if your opponent's not doing anything, which is basically what the deck needs. So I definitely recommend playing tar fire instead of lightning bolt because of, you know, it's, it has a lot of synergy with the rest of the deck. But yeah, you need some removal to go through discard spells, to kill the things that slip through, keep their board clear, maybe get a blocker out of the way. And uh, fatal push is just phenomenal. It's, it's swords to plowshares, basically. Yeah. It's no drawback, you know? Now, this week there's just been a ton of articles about this deck mm -hmm. due to its kind of performance. What's going on in this deck that people might not be seeing on the surface? What are some of the kind of tricky things or the car like the plays that can give you an edge with this deck if you know what you're doing? So I, I think it's, first of all, it's just general misconception as to like what the deck is trying to do and what is actually good against it. So. You know, people might look at it like, oh, it's just another Death Shadow combo deck or whatever without actually like, playing games or like looking at the list. And even I was surprised, you know, like until round like six of the Grand Prix last weekend, I didn't, I thought the deck was good, but I was just like, by round six, I was like, man, this deck is awesome. And I was like slowly learning how to play and slowly learning how to sideboard <laughs> because like I had misconceptions too, you know, it just happens. But yeah, basically treat it kind of like a Jun deck. Like they have the capability to grind you. They have the capability of going long. You can't necessarily just like, uh, you know, hope to have a fatal push to kill their death shadow, like, oh, I'll just kill their first death shadow and then they lose, you know, that's not necessarily what's going to happen because they're going to be disrupting you too. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do want some sort of grindy elements against this deck. Uh, ideally, it is just like disruption plus clock, basically the same thing that we're doing. And like even today, I played against like Oriok Champion, Mirror and Crusader stuff. And I lost the game to that stuff, but like I won the match, right. you know? So it's just like general misconceptions where it's just like, oh, Mirror Crusader beats the entire deck. Not so much. Yeah. So uh, I'm still kind of figuring out what is actually good against it. Like, I do think Snapcaster Fatal Push is probably good, especially if you have Ancestral Vision. Like, you have enough removal to kill their stuff, and you have enough to, like, grind and go long. Uh, Tron is kind of dicey, but I think Eldrazi Tron is probably a good matchup. And then, I don't know, things like Sun and Moon might be really bad, right? But I don't know. It's like right. Abzan's kind of bad. Same thing with the Grixis deck, but... Yeah, uh, just general misconceptions, I think. And uh, once, like, give it like two weeks to a month, something like that, and I think people will have enough reps in and they'll figure it out. And like, this deck is not busted. Sure. It's not off the hinges like Death Shadow needs to be banned or whatever. You know, people are going to adapt, the format's going to change, but yeah, right now I, I like it spot a lot. Okay, moving into the sideboard, you know, with the dominance of the deck last week. Did you kind of gear your deck towards knowing this deck's going to show up a lot next week, or did I, you not really care? So modern is tricky because you can't necessarily just be like, oh, that Death Shadow deck looks cool. I'll spend $1,000 to buy that deck or whatever, you know? So I think most people are going to add some cards to their sideboard, maybe change their main deck a little bit, but I wasn't expecting a ton of people to either jump on this deck or significantly change their deck choice to fight it. Uh, so basically all I did was just clean up my sideboard from last week. It was like, there was just like a certain amount of things that I wanted my deck to be capable of doing. Just like, you know, dealing with lingering souls, beating various combo decks, beating early creature decks, things like that. Being able to kill lands, having graveyard hate. And yeah, that was it. Just cleaned it up. Uh, I cut the white from the sideboard. I had like some lingering souls for grindy matchups, but those did not play out as well as I would have hoped. Mm -hmm. uh, it just. You know, like if you have a Lingering Souls and they have a Death Shadow, you have some blockers, but where where are you going? What are you sure. doing with this, you know? Uh, and then that's not even taking into consideration they can just find a Rampager and kill you anyway. So yeah, Lingering Souls was not a good answer. Ranger of Eos was very good, but then like Kataki Canvas you don't need. So we'll touch on some of the individual cards. You got an extra Liliana here in the sideboard. Kozlex Return is kind of a sweeper. And then, you know, Collective Brutality. I saw this, I think, uh, Matt Nass had it in his main deck at Baltimore. You yeah, kind of have some in the sideboard most here. Most of the Magic Online ones had one main, and I just have a Decay instead. It seemed like a better removal spell against the format. I had one main in the Grand Prix, too, and it was it was okay, but I think you can do better. Okay. But it, it is a phenomenal sideboard card. Big game Hunter showing up here. Another way to kill these cards. Near match. <laughs> no, I, it might be nonsense, because... It, it's a card that helps you grind because you have things like Hologon's Command, Liliana and the Last Hope to get it back. You have like Traverse to find it if you want, but it, the, the games just don't really go like that a lot of the time. Like I had Sam Black cast a Ranger of Eos against me and then he just died. You know, like sometimes that happens. The games don't necessarily go on that long, so uh, it might not be good, but sure. whatever. Let's have fun. Is there anything you couldn't get into the deck that you wanted? Because you got a bunch of stuff going on in the sideboard. Anything? No, it was it was more so like I had 13 or 14 slots that I really wanted, and then it was like, how do I want to round it out? Like I was kind of scared of like Leyline of Sanctity to some degree, especially from combo decks or something like Sun and Moon, where I was like, maybe I want 
a disenchant, but like I don't really want it to be two mana because if I only get to start playing discard spells on turn three, that might be a little too slow, but I can't play natural state, even though that's the one I would want against affinity. <laughs> so like, do I want to play nature's claim? No, because you're still trying to deal your opponent damage and kill them. So I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I, just, I have a maelstrom pulse, which like kills Leyline, kills lingering souls, kills death shadow is just kind of like a hedge against a bunch of different things. Okay. Lastly, to wrap it up, where do you see the format going if this deck continues to kind of rise like it is? Uh, the bad matchups are going to be played less, and people are going to figure out what decks are good against it, and they're going to play more. Like, I think Merfolk might be bad, Abzan, Grixis, uh, maybe Tron, maybe Sun and Moon, stuff like that. Okay. All right. Well, 3 and 1 so far. You have a bunch of people playing it that you kind of talk to. I know Majors and some other people are also sleeving this deck up. So yeah. we'll see if it uh, can continue its performance from last weekend. Thanks for joining me here on the sideboard. Stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Indianapolis.